Welcome back. So let's just quickly take a look at the not operator and be done. Uh, be done with the relational operators in any case. So in order to make the code, in order to make this code more readable, you should really use some parentheses like this. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna make any difference to the compiler. It really doesn't care. But when somebody's reading it, another human being, when they're reading it, they will appreciate you segmenting it. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the logical not operator. The logical not, uh, not, whoa. Well, <laughs> sorry, it's not, it's not, I, I just, you need to write an exclamation mark. That's the not operator. Uh, my bad. Just a uh, habit from another programming language. Never mind. Anyway. Of all the logical operators, NOT has the highest precedence. And logical NOT operator is a unary operator because it has only one operand denoted with an exclamation mark. So if you write exclamation mark and if you type, for example, I don't know, A, it means NOT A. That's how it's read anyway. But if you type, let's go ahead and make an example down below. Say not one equals, uh, sorry, bool not one equals probably, uh, can't use this as a naming standard. This is gonna just go ahead and say n1 and we're gonna say exclamation mark a. So, what this means is, what do, you, what do you think that the value of n1 will be? Try to guess. So let me just show you one more time. a is equal to true. Now, since we've placed an exclamation mark in front of it, we have successfully negated it. So instead of true, it will be false. And the value of n1 will be false. If you type in bool down below, we can, I don't know, uh, type in n2 and say uh, no not I don't know not C okay so not C what do you think that the value of n2 will be think about it C is equal to false if we negate this uh, it's false uh, sorry if we negate it it's going to be true so n2 will have the value of true that's it no, you're basically just reversing it like this. If A is true and if you negate it, it's going to become false. If C is false and if you negate it, it's going to become true. So this is what I mean by the precedence. If I type in bool, I don't know, n3, completely irrelevant, name of the variable in this case, A uh, and B not C and, and, and D, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that should be fine. A and percent and percent B, uh, sorry. Right, 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 right. Okay, there we go. So A and percent and percent not C and percent and percent D. So what do you, take a look at the expression and try to reach a conclusion what the end result will be. The end result will be true because true and A is true and we have negated C here. So C will also become true and D is also true. Henceforth, the result will be true. All of it will be true. If I type in bool and for, I do believe this will be the last example that I shall give you in this regard. You can type in not a, and try to, try, as, I, as I write it out, try to guess the result. Try to guess what it will be. Will it be, will the end result be true or will it be false? If I type in b and uh, pipe pipe, if I type c pipe pipe d. So, uh, Take a guess or conclude for yourselves. It's or. So as long as at least one of these evaluates to true, 
this is going to be this is going to the the entire section will be evaluated as true. Henceforth, this uh, this the result will be true because uh, a is true, but if we negate it, it's false, and false and false will yield false because b is also true, and when you negate it, it will be false, and then you have up like this: false and true is true because c is false, and once negated, it will become true. Henceforth, the result will be true. Anyway, that's it as far as the relational operators are concerned. It should be fine. I don't believe that I have skipped anything and we will jump. Uh, sorry, not the relational. These are the logical operators. That should be it as far as the logical operators are concerned. Uh, no more. I shall speak of them. But later on, when we go through the examples, you will see more complex variants of this. You, we will use them extensively. Please make sure that you understand this. You will need this. I mean, uh, for conditions, it will, you can, this is, if you have millions of lines of code, you are bound to encounter a lot of these examples. If you have a hundred lines of code, you are still bound to encounter these examples because a lot of what C++ is, uh, a lot of what it does, it will be based on sets and sets and sets of conditions. Your code will be based on that, basically. Anyway, if you don't understand this completely, please look it up on the net. Additionally, ask for ask questions in the discussion section. And uh, again, if you fail, it's okay. Just keep on going. It will be used, as I said, extensively through the code. So hopefully, eventually, you will pick it up. So next up, uh, we will go into relational operators. So in the follow-up tutorial. Till then, I'm going to bid you farewell and a ton of luck with this.